Hi guys, um, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be part 7 of the tutorial. Uh, build a website from scratch. Um, where we left off in the last uh, segment was uh, we, we added some content to the, the uh, copyright section um, or the footer, whichever term you want to call it. Um, and what we did is we added a paragraph tag uh, to contain our copyright information uh, and in that paragraph we, we included a a link, um, an A-link, and we've styled that using our CSS. So what I want to do from now on, I touched on it in the last tutorial, was we want to save this as a blank uh, template, essentially, because this is going to be the bare bones of our website. Um, the content of this page isn't going to change, uh, or the content that we have on the page up to this point isn't going to change at any stage in the future. Um, unless we add to the menu or anything like that, um, or maybe change the date in, in the copyright. Uh, you know, that, that's this is kind of the bare bones. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this as, as a blank page. Now, what I'm actually also going to do is I'm going to save it as a PHP document rather than a HTML document. And the reason I'm doing that is, and I discussed it a little earlier on in the, the series, that um, we're going to be adding in little bits of PHP code. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to automate certain processes on the page itself, um, like uh, the header, um, the header section here, the navigation section here is stuff that can be edited um, on an ongoing basis that if we decide to add in another page we only have to do it once rather than doing it on every single individual page. So what we do is we create a separate page for the actual navigation menu bar and uh, we set that on its own and what we do is we add a little PHP shortcut to it in place of where the menu bar would appear. Now in order to do that um, we're going to need to set up either a testing server or have your own online hosting set up. Now I'm not going to go into detail on how to um, set up a, a testing server because I don't usually use a testing environment. I use my my live server. Um, but there are numerous tutorials out there on, on how to set up uh, testing servers. Um, you can download programs called WAMP or XAMP or depending on what operating system you're using, there are different ver versions of the software available. So, But certainly you'll pl find plenty of tutorials on, on YouTube on, on, how to, um, on how to set up your servers and things like that. So if you want to go ahead and set that up yourselves, uh, you can, but you... The, there's so many cheap hosting packages out there that it's you're nearly as well to go and 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 get some form of online hosting, um, especially if you're if you're looking at this series, you're obviously contemplating doing a website, so you're going to need hosting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, my own hosting account. But for now, I think what we need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to set this page up as our template. So. All we need to do is we need to go File and Save As, and rather than just save it as an index.html, what we're going to save it as is I'm just going to call it blank um, dot php. Now, what this means essentially is that it's going to be a blank. I'm going to use this as a template, but it's going to be a PHP document. So we're going to save that, and that means then that every time we want to open a new document or start a new page from scratch, we just open this and file and save it as whatever the name of our page is going to be. Now what I also want to do is I'm going to close that page, the index HTML page, and we'll open up our navigation menu here again on the right hand side. Um, and we change our index.html uh, to index.php. And as I said already, you can update the links. Um, as I said already, this is just to make it easier for the future um, where, we're, where we're going to add in PHP code. Now, it doesn't make the page appear any different. Um, the only thing about it is, is if you go to view this on your normal te testing environment through the Adobe, uh, you won't see any of the PHP uh, portions of the page. As now it'll display as it is, it is given a message here, dynamically related files cannot be discovered because the testing server is not defined and it's given you the option to set one up. But as I said, I'm going to use my online 
um, testing environment or my online server as a testing environment. But if we preview that in the browser, it does come up to say the page is containing server side code. You need a testing server. Would you like to specify one now? No. And we're going to save the changes to blank. So it'll still appear as normal for now, but when we add in the code later on, um, it may not show up as it's as it's shown up now. So we'll close out of that. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to create some place for our PHP uh, documents to, to do for, for our PHP and for our navigation menu bar to be to be stored. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that. So you can control X. Uh, or sorry, I selected the wrong thing actually. So we're going to select the whole navigation. So you can control X that or right click and cut. And if we go file and new and we want to create a new PHP document. Now we want to delete all of this information here and we want to paste in in that there. So what we're going to do now in our folder structure here if we quick click on our site and we want to create a new folder and what we're going to call this is we're just going to call this includes because it's going to be the PHP include function so it's and what we're going to do is we're going to store or save this this document in it so file save as and it's going to be saved in the includes folder and we're just going to call this nav and it'll automatically give it its PHP um, file type. So as you can see, it saved that in there. So what we need to do now is um, we need to create the PHP function on our page. So if we save all now and automatically you get this up and it's saying it's got JavaScript for a widget that no longer exists uh, because we have put this essentially in another document always click no on this because if you click yes what it'll do is it'll remove the PHP or the JavaScript and the spray menu bar won't work anymore so always click no when you get this prompt in Dreamweaver so what we need to do now is we need to where the navigation bar was we need to add in the PHP function and in order for this function to work what we're going to do is we're just going to put in this piece of code right here so, and uh, what this is, is that's a, an opening PHP tag, and that's the closing PHP tag. So what we're doing here is we're defining, we're, at, we're defining um, a property in the PHP. We're actually calling a function uh, to include once. That's the, that's the PHP function, to include once uh, the navigation nav.php which is contained within the includes um, folder so if we save that now and if we preview that in the browser I'll just show you you're going to get asked again about a testing server um, and as you can see it's not including the um, the navigation bar because it won't run the PHP function in Dreamweaver's test environment so what we have to do is we have to define an online server in order to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how to set up a, a server through Dreamweaver um, but you're going to need some of the information from your own hosting uh, provider. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you how to define a testing environment or, or a local host or sorry not a local host, a remote server um, and how you go about adding that in is if you go to site manage sites and the one that you're on, this is our one here, is Golf Club. You cl you click on Edit, and again you get you familiar with this area here where we define the initial folders um, for setting up our folder structure, our site structure, and root folders. In the second one here, you go down to Servers, and you click on the Add New Server button. Now this process would be the same if you were adding in your own testing server. Um, but in my case, um, what you do here is you add in the name of your server 
and again this is all information that's available from your hosting provider the next thing you do here is your FTP server address uh, generally generally it'll be FTP dot whatever your mydomain.com is your username will be one that you would use to log into your hosting account and your password your root directory is almost always public underscore HTML forward slash and whatever the name of your whatever the name of, of the folder you're set up or it could just be public underscore HTML and of course your web URL is just standard that's pretty much common common um, details so and what you need to do at that stage is you need to test it what we have to do now is we actually have to um, if you go over here into your pane you can um, you can go to your remote server and it should connect to the host and it'll tell you show you exactly what's in your 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 server at the moment there's nothing there so what we need to do is we need to go back to our local view and we need to put up the entire site you just select this folder here and the blue arrow here click that and that's going to FTP your entire website it's going to ask you if you want to push the entire site up um, obviously the first time you're going to want to do this so you click on OK and it goes through the motions of putting up all the documentation all the files needed in order for your website to work okay now that our site is actually entirely up on the the internet what we want to do now is I want to uh, copy this PHP function that we put in place um, so we'll copy that I want to close down that but I want to open up our index.php document because it still has our little navigation div in it so in place of that I just want to put our PHP function um, PHP include function so we tab that in just to um, so if we save that and what we want to do then is we want to FTP that to the server as well so if you select the individual file here you can go through the same process here of doing that and it's going to ask you if you want to put the dependent files you don't need to because the only file that you actually made any changes to in this one was the actual index.php file so that's you don't need to be putting up uh, any of the dependent files you're only putting up the index.php page so you click on no here so that's that much done so if we go into the browser now and um, what I'm going to do is whatever your domain name was that you've set up for this on your hosting account but uh, my one is um, I've set it up in a subfolder of my of my hosting and as you can see the navigation menu bar appears even though we've deleted it from our main page and put in a PHP function instead and if we right click anywhere on this page what we can do is we can view the source um, which basically you can view the background code and if you look at the background code which is essentially what we've done there under this one here the navigation bar is actually listed on the page so what the PHP function has done is it's called into place where we've placed that PHP function it's called in everything from our navigation external page and put it into that area there so if anybody was looking at your website in the view source they'd never see the PHP function that we've included there so I think we've done a lot in this portion of the tutorial so I think we we'll leave it at that for now and in the next section then we're going to maybe move on and maybe put the put um, put some content into our into our main portion of the web page so that'll do for now so we'll talk to you in the next tutorial and please remember to uh, subscribe and uh, drop us a wee like if you if you like if you like the tutorial and uh, leave a comment or two as well if you want thanks a million bye